I welcome you back to another episode from our show, for example. The example that our Lord had given today is based on a question about greediness. Some brother was greedy and he wants to use God as a judge, but God refused to be an arbiter among greedy brothers. So he gave them this story, that example. There was a very rich man and his richness became more and more. But rich, this rich man thought within himself and he said, what shall I do? And watch the word I. I have no room to store my crops. I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. I will store all my crops. I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. And right away, our Lord starts asking, or we should ask, ourselves. How come our Lord said this man is a fool? How, God, how come this man is considered in the eyes of God fool when a lot of people in the world would consider him very practical, very wise? He is very wealthy, so he is planning for the future. Let me ruin or destroy my barns, build the greater one, and so forth. The reasons of his foolishness are more than one. The first thing is, he was only thinking of himself. I will build. I will destroy. I will eat. I will drink. I will store. The second reason for his foolishness and lack of wisdom, that he assumed that he is going to live for many years. He says, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. One of our foolish aspects of our life, when we expect that we are going to outlive any godly plans, and all of a sudden, all our plans becomes as if it's our own wisdom. Forgetting what God is planning for us. The worst thing that this man has done is that he was only planning for his worldly things and he never planned for his eternal life. He was practical and wise as far as the worldly wisdom, but he was foolish as far as the heavenly wisdom. This man was only thinking how to get bigger and richer and how to make his soul happier and merrier, but never thought what would his spirit feel when his mind and body are merry with worldly things. This man is foolish in the eyes of God and he told them, fool. There isn't many people God have called them fool. But this man won that title because he assumed his worldly stuff can make him live forever. He was fooled because he made the word I am the most important thing and he never looked at anybody else or any needs of anyone else. Thirdly, he was fooled because he never thought that God himself is a source of his blessings richness and wealth. When this man was saying to himself, soul, live for many years, take ease, eat, drink and be merry, the same sentence our Lord told him today, tonight. Amazingly, we sometimes live for tomorrow, but we need to live for the day after tomorrow. The wiser of us will always plan for his eternity and the fool amongst us who only plans for tomorrow. Tomorrow will always come, but the day after tomorrow, eternity is what matters. 
is it is it wrong to plan for the future of course not you need to plan you need to plan for your marriage you need to plan for your career you need to have um, uh, wealth and richness no problem but the dependency on these things is what's wrong making your mind and spirit and soul so busy about getting rich and wealthy and making myself always happy only is what is the problem god is not against wealth or richness but what he is against that you don't plan the wisdom for eternity our lord in this parable we speaking about being greedy between each other but also he is speaking how come we are not greedy to enter the kingdom of god to win a place in the kingdom of god this fool rich man teaches us while you are planning for tomorrow plan for eternity don't assume you are going to live for many years maybe god's plan is different maybe you are assuming wrong by saying i'm going to live for many years and i will not have to worry about tomorrow i have news for you this rich man when he thought only of himself and only of building for tomorrow forgetting what eternity is his soul was snatched out of him unprepared no one knows the hour or the day so be prepared don't let the the groom comes when the bride is unprepared don't let the groom comes to find the bride sleepy or the bride taken off her garment let the groom comes finding you ready prepared dressed repentant and at that time he will bless your life here and more important thereafter this is the fool rich man teaching us don't be like me until next time have a blessed time thank you